Welcome back. So, in the last lecture, we were discussing about the solvent effect on fluorescence. And uh, what we have seen is that if you have a solute obviously having permanent dipole, either in the ground state is mu g or in the excited state it is mu e, if you put that solute in the solvent, then that solute will going to polarize the solvent both in electronically and in the orientational polarization, right. And because of this polarization, the solvent will uh, create reaction field around the solute and because of this reaction field, the solute will going to stabilize. And with this, we have uh, estimate or we, we have uh, calculated the stabilization energy, right. When you take the solute from vacuum to a particular solvent, both in terms of absorption and in emission. Let, let, let us see once again. So, what we found is that if, if this is the energy level of the particular solute having dipole moment mu g or mu e in the excited uh, ground state and in the excited state. So, let me write over here, this is the energy E g that is ground state in the vapor, that is what we have seen already, right. This is E E vapor, the dipole moment here is mu e, here dipole moment is mu g, right. So, uh, and this is in the vapor, right. So, if you when you put this in a, in a solvent, then as we know that the, this energy will going to stabilize and I uh, define this energies as E g and E e, right. And we have seen that the expression of E g and E e in terms of the dipole moment, the polarizability both F E L and F R. So, let me write it once again over here. So, this is E g what we have calculated as E g vapor minus twice mu g square by a cube. As you remember this mu g is the ground state dipole moment and A is the radius of the cavity. Uh, F E L minus twice mu g square by a cube F O R and we got E E equal to E E vapor minus twice mu e square divided by a cube F E L minus twice mu g mu e right mu g mu e divided by a cube f o r. Then what we said that uh, obviously, this orientational polarizability is slow right and uh, so it will take some time to stabilize the excited state because the, the creation of the excited state is electronic rearrangement which is instantaneous like uh, less than a femtosecond. So, the solvent molecule will take some time to reorient themselves to stabilize it. So, the so, so, so that uh, stabilized state, right? Stabilized state. So, the, this will go, this state will going to be further stabilized, right? Because of this solvent reorientation, and I termed it as E E S, and uh, I termed it as E G S. That means solvated, right? And we found that E G S is equal to E G vapor minus twice mu g square by a cube f e l minus twice mu g mu e is not it by a cube f o r right and e e s is E E vapor minus twice mu e square by a cube F E L minus twice mu e square by a cube F 
OR. So, we got these four equations, right. So, what we can do if we take E E minus E G, right, that will going to be my absorption spectra of that particular solute in that particular solvent, right. And then E E S minus E G S is my emission spectra, right. So, I can write this H nu absorption and here H nu emission, right. So, H nu absorption if I calculate. So, this H nu absorption will be H nu absorption is equal to E e minus E g, E e minus E g and that we already have seen, right. So, this is E e vapor minus E g vapor minus twice F E L divided by A cube mu e square minus mu g square minus twice F O R by A cube mu g into mu e minus mu g right. And similarly, I can calculate the H nu emission right. So, H nu emission is equal to E E S minus E G S. This is going to be equal to E E vapor E E vapor minus E G vapor right. Okay, then this will going to be equal to minus twice F E L by A cube from here from this equation and this equation right. I am writing it by A cube to mu E square minus mu G square minus twice F O R by A cube mu E into mu E minus mu G. Right. Okay. So, now I can do one thing, I can just take H nu absorption minus H nu emission right, and see what will happen. So, if I just plot, if I just calculate H nu absorption minus H nu emission, so then this quantity right, minus this quantity. So, this will be equal to E E vapor minus E G vapor. So, I'll write again all the term 2 F E L by A cube mu E square minus mu G square minus 2 F O R by A cube mu g into mu e minus mu g minus again this term e vapor minus e g vapor plus 2 f e l divided by a cube mu e square minus mu g square plus twice f o r by a cube mu e mu e minus mu g. So, these terms will cancel out. So, this will ended up with twice F O R by a cube, right. So, see here mu e square minus mu e mu g. So, here mu e square minus mu e mu g and here is my mu g square mu e mu g. So, this is nothing but mu e square minus mu e mu g minus then here is my minus 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 plus mu g mu e plus mu g square. So, this is equal to twice f o r by a cube mu e minus mu g whole square. Okay, so that is it. So, what I got? 
I got is H nu absorption minus H nu emission is equal to this, right. So, please take a note on that. So, what is the form of F over? I said this is a function of both dielectric constant and refractive index, right. So, now what I have? I have nu absorption minus nu emission, this will going to be equal to mu E minus mu G whole square by 2 A cube and that H will come over here into F over and F over I can write, I know this F over is equal to F over equal to epsilon minus 1 by twice epsilon plus 1 minus n square minus 1 by twice n square plus 1, right. So, what I got is this equation and if you want you can change it to the wave number. So, if I change nu to nu bar, right and uh, what I have to do? I have to divide this by again another c, right. So, then I can also write nu bar absorption minus nu bar emission is equal to twice by h c a cube 2 by h c a cube mu e minus mu g square into epsilon minus 1 by twice epsilon plus 1 n square minus 1 by twice n square plus 1, right. Okay. So, this is nothing but the difference in uh, absorption and emission spectra, right, either in terms of frequency or in terms of wave number, right. So, if my absorption is like this, And in that particular solvent, my emission is like this. So, then this is the difference, right? That is the difference, that is my stroke shift. But as I have discussed earlier, right, I all I said that what is the implication of the Kassas rule? Kassas rule says that the emission will take place from the lowest vibrational level of the first electronic excited state that and it is also obviously so according to the frank quantum principle right so absorption emission both that means is always found that emission maxima is shifted right emission maxima is shifted to lower wavelength than the absorption even even there is no such kind of solvent effect so those are the inherent so the those are the stock shift right so those inherent stock shift is because of the vibrational relaxation, right. So, if you excite a molecule in the higher vibrational level, eventually it will come back to the lowest vibrational level of the first singlet excited state and then uh, emission will take place which is accordance to the frank gordon principle, right, as I showed you earlier. That means, there will be inherent stock shift, right, inherent stock. So, this stock shift, so this one is because of what? Is because of solvation right is because of solvation for this particular solvent for a particular solvent epsilon and n are fixed right so this is for a particular solvent for a particular solvent this quantity is fixed isn't it Okay, so, for a particular solvent I got some value of this and then uh, this this part, what about this part? This part is a constant, right? It has a particular radius of cavity A, H is constant, C is constant, so it is a constant. So, this difference between absorption and emission maxima, right, is guided by this dipole moment of the species and this is simply because of this solvation, differential solvation of the ground and the excited state, right. So, in the absorption and the emission, because absorption is instantaneous. So, when we calculate the we calculate we, we use the ground state dipole moment, but in emission it takes some time 
the, because solvent re, re, reorientation takes some time. So, and we have uh, treated it uh, that solvent reorientation because the lifetime of the excited state is not like a very, very small. Right. So, it has a finite lifetime about nanosecond. So, then we calculated this uh, equation. So, this particular equation is telling me that the shift from the absorption and emission right, is because of the solvent, but I already have a inherent stroke shift of any uh, such kind of fluorescent molecule, right? whether it has a more excited state development or more ground state development, whatever it is, I will have a inherent stroke shift. right? So, for a molecule I have a inherent stroke shift, again repeating it the same. right? So, then this equation should be plus something, right? so let me rewrite it over here. So, then this equation should be new absorption I mean new bar minus new bar emission is equal to 2 by H C A cube mu e minus mu g whole square epsilon minus 1 by twice epsilon plus 1 minus n square minus 1 by twice n square plus 1 plus some constant c and this particular constant c is because of the inherent stroke shift of this molecule which is because of the vibrational relaxation. right? So, we got our e equation of interest and this equation is known as lippert mataga equation, lippert mataga equation. If you go to Japan, they, they call this equation as mataga lippert equation, because they think that uh, Mataka is the pioneer of this equation, but in Europe is called the Lippert Mataka equation. Anyway, so in this case, the this equation tells me a very interesting thing is that if I measure absorption and emission spectra right, of your particular solute at a different different solvents. Different solvent means these actually represent my solvent. No? this is my solvent, this actually represent my solvent. This C is constant, is independent of the solvent, this C is solvent independent quantity. right? So, now if I measure the absorption and emission of the solute at a various solvents, right? then I will get a different value of lambda uh, nu bar emission and nu bar uh, absorption. So, then I take this uh, difference between new bar absorption new bar absorption minus new bar emission and i can simply plot the same right so if i plot the this new bar absorption minus new bar emission right versus versus that solvent solvent is designated as this function epsilon minus 1 by twice epsilon plus 1 minus n square minus 1 by twice n square plus 1. If I plot this new absorption and emission for different solvent, so this is solvent 1, this is solvent 2, this is solvent 3, this is solvent 4, 5, 6 like that. right? So, what I will get? I will get a straight line, this is a straight line equation like y equal to mx plus c. So, I will get a straight line with intercept of c right? and the slope will be equal to 2 by h c a cube into mu e minus mu e whole square. Right? So, I will get uh, like a different different points like over here, different 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 points and that will correspond to a straight line where this intercept is equal to c, this is inherent stock shape and the slope will be equal to 2 by h c a cube to mu e minus mu g whole square. So, it means uh, obviously here A C A cube these are the fixed quantity and uh, it means that if you do such kind of experiment then the slope is nothing but mu e minus mu g whole square right? with this constant value. It means that if you know 
that ground state dipole moment, you will be able to calculate the excited state dipole moment and vice versa. That means, if you know the excited state dipole moment, you will be able to calculate the ground state dipole moment. Right? Now, the question is how is going to measure the ground state dipole moment? There are several techniques by which you can measure, but let me uh, tweak this equation in a different way and I will show you an, another interesting outcome of the same. So, what I have done? I have done new absorption, new bar absorption minus new bar emission right? and we got that equation right? and we got this equation new bar absorption minus new bar emission we got this equation. Instead of doing that, I can also do new bar absorption plus new bar emission and let us see what I will get. right? So, like I decided to do that right earlier or Lippert and Mataka decided to do that new bar absorption minus new bar emission. Right? Let, let us do the other thing. So, H new absorption plus H new emission, I can also do it like that, eh? because I know all these forms, right? I know what is H new absorption, I know what is H new emission, so I can do plus. right? So, if you, if you do that, it will be, it will be E E vapor minus E G vapor minus twice F E L by A cube mu E square minus mu G square minus twice F O R by A cube to mu G to mu E minus mu G right plus E E vapor minus E G vapor minus twice F E L by A cube mu e square minus mu G square minus twice F O R by A cube mu E into mu E minus mu G. Right? So, let me rewrite it like this way, this is equal to twice E E vapor minus E G vapor minus, so here mu E square minus mu G square by a cube I will take outside. So, this is equal to mu E square minus mu G square by A cube, this will be going to be equal to 4 F E L plus 2 F O R. Okay? So, if you do, you will get that, right? do not worry. So, you see here that is multiplied by mu e. So, this 2 f o r term over here, this is I have multiplied it over here. So, 4 f e l will come over here, right. Okay, so, it will be like this only, do not worry. Now, if I divide it, right, by h c, that means, I will get new absorption, new bar absorption plus new bar emission. So, if I want to get new bar absorption plus new bar emission, then this will going to be twice mu e square minus mu g square by a cube, right. So, negative sign will be there because I am writing this as first minus into this quantity a twice F L plus F O R, right? Twice F L plus F O R. 
what is F E L? Right, F E L I said that is n square minus 1 plus twice n square plus 1 and that whole thing complete polarization is epsilon minus 1 by twice epsilon plus 1. So, I write I rewrite over here. So, this will going to be equal to epsilon minus 1 by twice epsilon plus 1 plus it is not minus now because of this term this will going to be equal to n square minus 1 by twice n square plus 1. right? So, and obviously, this quantity is there, this quantity, this quantity is just a constant. So, this is just that constant. right? So, it means that the dependence of this new bar absorption and new bar emission plus right? that uh, sum is like this way. So, I can also write uh, write this new bar absorption minus new bar emission once again over here. So, new bar absorption minus new bar emission once again over here let me write. So, that is equal to twice mu e minus mu g whole square whole square by Oh, so I missed one thing. This is H C. I missed. Okay, so mu e minus mu g whole square by H C a cube, and here that function is minus, right? Epsilon minus one by twice epsilon plus one minus n square minus one by twice n square plus one, and then that vapor part because of this vapor part, I have this C, right? So now. I, I I can think of that this is if I plot new bar absorption minus new bar emission versus this quantity epsilon minus 1 by twice epsilon plus 1 plus n square minus 1 by twice n square plus 1. I will get a straight line with a negative slope and in this case if I plot this new bar absorption plus new sorry here is my plus and here is my minus minus new bar emission versus epsilon minus 1 by twice epsilon plus 1 minus n square minus 1 by twice n square plus 1 then I will get a straight line with a positive slope. Okay, Let us take that this slope is m 1, this slope is m 2 and uh, so we will get this straight line and let me finish uh, the discussion uh, here and we will going to see that uh, what is the outcome of this analysis in the next lecture. Thank you.